I'm an anarchist. Well, surprise, surprise. But I grew up in a kind of sexually frustrating religious household. I don't know how much I want to blame that on my impotence in regards to being forward about things. For a while, I wondered if I was gay because I never asked girls out on dates, but I also never found any of my guy friends attractive. I felt like there was not strong desire to build a sexual or any relationship to speak of. Where religion comes in relates to your contradiction of feelings, sex is wrong until marriage, but my father seems anxious for me to date. Still, I have not, and I am 26. On my own now, but with the job, where does anyone find the time to develop anything remotely personal? I am locked into these old beliefs that expect the purpose of romantic entanglements are on marriage. Sorry? I am locked into these old beliefs that expect the purpose of romantic entanglements Ent ah. are on marriage. Okay. Romance should lead to marriage. Yeah. For a long time, I have been suffocated by my parents. Now I'm on my own, and the only thing remotely close to a sexual encounter was an invitation to a woman's apartment after we tore this bar waitress's head off in a bar about the topic of police and their brutality and this led into a few unexpected informal dates or were there dates none of it was planned but on the third time we met and stoned out of my mind she asked if i want to be her boyfriend friends with benefits or simply a friend i went frigid i did not know what to say in retrospect i think i was embarrassed telling her i never had sex i didn't mind the idea but being uh, but of being in a relationship it just never came up ever i didn't mind the idea but of being okay no Maybe there are a few questions in that. I don't know what is the biggest problem for me. I struggle with accepting I am asexual, but maybe I am. But how does a relationship even work without sex? I assume no one wants that. It feels strangely alien and lifeless ex existence. Perhaps it isn't. I don't know. Sorry if it was such a long post. Okay, and the next one. Hello from America, ladies. First off, thank you for the show. I've been really enjoying the laid back format and your bubbly personalities. Right then, so I'm writing in about some nasty religious fundamentalism that took over my perspective on the dating world. I'm 25, male. The last one was 26. Which is interesting, right? They're so similar. They're so similar. I guess they're just a lot of people like that. Was raised in a violent draconian Christian household and thus became a sheltered, obedient young man. I always tried to please my narcissistic parents in possibly high standards and tiptoe around their toxic judgments, lest I would be sharply criticized or more. Due to this, I wasn't allowed to develop into my own interest and was brainwashed into a hyper-conservative Christian mindset. This includes celibacy until marriage, to the point where it became a core fixation of my personality. I may in fact suffer from undiagnosed I OCD or Asperger's. That could play into this. This has led me to obsessively romanticizing the idea of relationships. Unquestionable loyalty became a foundation of my identity. I also developed a pathetically immature idea that I would marry the first girl I date. Anyways, this obsession has taken over my life and I can't seem to let it go, even after recognizing the futility of it. Now that I have grown into agnosticism and leftism, I acknowledge that celibacy is rooted in patriarchy and finding a girl that meets the standard will prove impossible, especially in leftist circles. <laughs> I, also realize, I also realize that there is an unspoken push-pull type ritual inherent to love, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to read into social cues well enough to learn how to play this, in quotation marks, game. This all has led me to being very isolated and develop serious mental illness. I'm finally coming to terms that I need to drop this stupid belief, but it seems really deep-seated. It feels that I would be betraying my old self, and the thought of all the opportunities I, uh, that go is generally making me suicidal. Without trying to sound conceited, let me say I am above average when it comes to looks, so I've had plenty of opportunities to fool around on hookup, but I would turn them all down for some misguided trust that I would find a girl who shares my ideals. I guess I'm just asking for some advice or any words that would help me let go and stop obsessing over this, especially this insecurity of how inexperienced I am, plus a regressive disgust of how promiscuous some people can be. Like, they're either the same person or, like, brothers. You guys should meet. Yeah. I 26, mean, 25, America. You really think they're different people? They both have a religious thing. They both have an obsession with marriage being the only way of doing it they both think that like promiscuity is bad and also have a vague disgust of hooking up and or sex no i think they are different because one is flirting with asexuality you know and doesn't necessarily so that they say that they had like serious mental health issues etc i guess they said they might be asexual the other one yeah. said they might be aspergers can i have some wine yeah, of course no this is a, this is i feel like wine is appropriate for this as well the sin 
Yes. Well, drinking was not a sin. Jesus By the turned. way, abs- apologies, but it's us. We are going to be making jokes. Like, I know these are serious themes and, like, we are fully sympathetic and we're going to get into, like, the meat and grind of this of, of this question. Uh, but, 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 you know, like, I don't think you'd be writing us in if you would think that we're just going to, like you know be super clinical about this as such like you know we have huge sympathy with you and like yeah have so many feelings and like solidarity with all of this but if we're gonna make like if we if we want to make like blood to wine jokes we're gonna do them like hallelujah um, apologies hallelujah okay there are two comments i had in the first one yeah <laughs> and again sorry if we'll be mixing these two we understand that again they come from possibly different um, individuals as such but I mean it's kind of fascinating and I think it would be if these are literally two separate separate people mm. you must know how many of you there mm. are it's interesting ever since I've started joining a lot of um, American relationship groups like the religion aspect it's just coming across so much more than it has in like my life in the UK which is really interesting of like the religion impacting people's look look outlook on like sex and relationships but um, okay one tiny comment has nothing to do with the question at all but um the fact that it sounds like you and this girl are having a go at a waitress about police brutality doesn't sound that cool to me. Yeah, same. So maybe stop that. Yeah, that's not something to brag about. Don't have a go at people in the service industry, even if it's about a righteous topic. Yeah. Not a good look. Yeah. Um, the second comment was, when this girl said, would you like to be my boyfriend, friend with benefits, or just friends? Oh my God, my first date with my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Where we go back to um, my apartment, and he's like, so wrong. I like you as a friend, and we could be friends. I could also like you as more than a friend, and we could be more than friends. Or we could like each other as comrades, and be comrades. And I just want you to know which, which one to pick. And it put me so much on the spot, and I completely froze. Will's like, would you like to come inside? So I get you on not being able to answer that very difficult multiple choice question. Just like... <laughs> Especially since it's like, it feels like then it's solid then. Like it's not fluid. Yeah, I don't want to decide yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Whether or not you're asexual, only you can decide. What I can say is there's loads and loads of really good asexuality um, Facebook groups where you can just join them and read and explore and look at those things. But it sounds like to me that you're not. Yeah, same. I wonder what's your relationship with your own body and touching yourself as such. Because like, Ooh. right? Because I, I find a lot of the time with asexuality, like I suppose like physical pleasure, whatever one would call it, is not necessarily part of the game but it doesn't seem like you're someone that doesn't touch yourself however maybe that's the case maybe you feel the guilt even in that and i think Mm. fundamentally this is the question well this is the i I guess the phrase that kind of ties both of those questions together that it is absolutely normal that you would question that in you because for a longest most important period of your life what's been drilled into you is that sexual desire is a sin it's a sin that will punish you where you will burn in hell for eternity that's scary man that's really scary of course you don't want to go anywhere close to that or you feel dirty if you've done anything along those lines and to and to escape that is is incredibly difficult Mm. so kudos that you're even attempting to and it's the sort of thing where i mean our obvious you know answer will be here like jesus christ go explore have fun because really it's just incredible physical pleasure yeah however that's easy for us to say right because we just don't necessarily have at the back of my our our minds this eternal uh, damnation well on one hand we don't on the other hand as women we do right oh yeah we can relate to the whole like being shamed for having sex part 100 percent. yeah Yeah, even to this day 100 percent. like i mean i feel you know like Every time I'm been with someone, I'm like, am I going closer and closer to being a whore? What number of partners is, is okay, you, Mariam, are officially a whore? 5, 10, 20, 50? When is it official? Yeah. And whilst we, like, obviously are, like, super sex positive and all of those sure. things in our, like, political life, in our, like, tiny little heads, when I have a hookup, I pretty much feel disgusted with myself the next day and need to shower. Same. Regardless Same. of whether he was caring and lovely yeah, yeah, yeah. or a dickhead who left. I still have well, to more with wrestle. The left. I have it with both. Uh, in to some degree, I have it with both. Okay. And I also, to some degree, have it every time I have sex. And also, I, a side note, I went through a whole period about um, nine months ago thinking I was asexual. And I, I would sit in the garage, chain smoking in the dark, and Google websites on are you asexual or not. Turns out I was just suppressed. 
And so like that's another thing, like sex drive and libido change a lot to do with mental health. And like one of you was saying like you have suicidal thoughts. That is something that should be taken seriously and you should yeah. hopefully like seek help for that. But also yeah. depression of any kind can completely affect libido. Do you watch porn? Like the masturbation was the one question. Do you watch porn? What kind of porn do you yes, like? Yes. Does it turn you on or are you just doing it because you feel like you ought to do it? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like an um d definitely porn porn is also a bit of a vortex right like the more uh not again again we're fairly porn pro and all of that stuff but i mean pro porn pro porn i don't know uh but you know the more you've seen of it the more like somewhat desensitized you become mm -hmm. of it perhaps a bit you go towards you know more yeah i'm finding it a real problem like i can't get off to things that i could get off to two years ago well that's why i've been really into this audio porn thing because it just completely puts you to the position where uh well first of all it's, it's just quite subtle and, and nice and um just lovely but it, it instead of seeing the imagery straight away you actually have to mm. use your imagination and it's great well, and you can come up with the, whatever partner would be attractive to you you know so it's not necessarily that it will be like these porn people with their bits and that like they're very much they don't necessarily describe the way that you look at mm. all but so you just have images in your head and that has been really and actually has brought my sensitivity up well i was gonna say like i because i used to really love erotica but i and i really when i find good erotica still that gets me off way better than like visual porn because it's because it's using my imagination yeah. but i've had i've had a real hard time finding good erotica the last few years if anyone has any erotica they want to um, recommend me please Please, please do either DM me if you're embarrassed or post it in one of our YouTube videos. But that's really like wide, right? So what what type would you like? I mean, Harry Potter or fucking or <laughs> mm, not a fandom that I don't know. If it was a fandom, I would have to go with Harry Potter, Star Wars or Good Omens. Um, it it's more about I guess yeah, it's about the narrative, which is really hard. But like if you you've seen a lot of me so far, if you really like something and you think we'd be friends, then like send it my way because Literotica is a really hard to navigate website and very dubious standards and also very quick. I like build up. I was like funny. I was like getting to know the characters a bit, a bit of storyline, you know? This is great how it's like actually coming back to people and giving us <laughs> Oh, come on. We deserve a reward. <laughs> no, that's But great. no, back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I fully agree. And um, um, I mean, I, I guess I'm just sharing my, mm. as a free sense, uh, resource that I have found. Revelation. Very, for real. Oof. Um, yeah, so, so okay. Um, so you've not one of you have not had sex. Well, again, that ain't don't that worry big about of a deal. it. Yeah. Literally, just just don't worry about it. But it's not going to be silk sheets. It's probably not going to be that good. Yeah, just get okay. Break the seal. Just get it over with. Because then, like, the more you think about it, the more it becomes. It just snowballs into this huge thing where it's like then the biggest thing. And really, it's just not that no. big of a deal. Virginity is a social construct. Yeah. Like according to patriarchal standards, most lesbians haven't even have had sex, you know what I mean? Sex is a construct, but getting it out of your head to the concept of virginity will be really good for you, I think. Yeah, and okay, so there are ways of doing this, like you can, you know, I, for instance, if you're gonna try and meet someone on the internet, there are two ways you either, I think, you know, say to person straight away that that's something that they're gonna be doing, and I think maybe for someone that's a turn on, then that's great. If you're not telling someone that that's what you're looking after, I'd say don't just spring it before. Well, I mean, you can, obviously. Like, oh that's just really subjective and everything. Can I tell a short story? Sure. I once um, went on a date with this dude, and it was going really well, and then, like, we were all, like, lying in his bed, and then, like, I was naked, and then he whispered in my ear, is it my first time? And I froze, and I was like, I don't fancy you that much. I wish you hadn't told me. I feel a lot of responsibility right now. I don't want to be your memory. Like... I didn't consent to this, and yet not to say that being a virgin, not saying it is cons is not consensual, but basically I lost deal. all interest in it. Whereas if he hadn't told me, I'd have like banged his lights out. And so, not to say you shouldn't tell. Probably my like ethical feminist would be like you should tell, but also do what's best for you. Do what's best for you, but understand the for the other person that might also be a lot to take in. It feels like on. a responsibility. Whereas you know. If someone didn't tell me, and then he told me after or the next day, I wouldn't really care. It was the fact that it was like, as I was naked, we were about to do it, he whispered in my ear. And so I like rolled over and pretended to go to sleep on his like single bed in like <sighs> Oxford dorms. It was not my proudest. Like. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this. <laughs> so this when you mentioned that, I was like, that was an anecdote I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, but I mean, again, look that means you're a bit older yeah a bit more experienced you're probably gonna skip the early 20s terrible sex you know so you you so as in you're gonna 
just have great sex hopefully straight away so really yeah. it's just not that big but it's just so tricky because like as you can tell we are just fairly sex positive and what we do just want to welcome you in the club or actually it's just fucking great times but, but also, there's so lot, also there's a lot of sex that's crap and and you know a bit either like you feel bad or you don't feel bad and it was just a bit meh and that's okay too it's not going to be this like necessarily this like don't thing, especially the first, sex <laughs> yeah that's what yeah that's what i mean though i guess <laughs> Like, don't expect it to be shit, but don't expect it to be great. Don't expect it all to be the same. But again, there are, I bet there are a lot of support groups that, that also just deal with, like, Christian uh, guilt, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's just it, it's just a thing. And also, these are conversations we have. For instance, I oh, I hate the fact that I'm now going to reference Sex and the City. I fucking hate myself. I thought you were going to go for Fleabag for some reason. I mean, I guess that would be more... The sexy priest. I suppose so. Yeah. But there was this, like, so Miranda was dating, I guess, a Christian man that, like, every time they would hook up, he would straight away run to the shower, you know, to, like, wash the sin off or whatever. And she was like, can't deal with them. Just broke up with them. Although they were getting on for every other, th- like, with every Fair other enough, thing. Though. No! Well, come on, you're getting on with every, for every other thing. Yeah, but sex. you can, like, not like a thing and be okay with that. Sure, but also, like, you can work with them with that. What, can you, what if you just have that conversation? Like, well, yeah, like, I run to shower immediately after sex because I'm super scared of UTIs. Okay. Okay. Because I now can have um, graphic. Now, I can now have spunk inside me ever since I got my IUD. I was like, how do I do that? <laughs> but you know, I'm like super aware of UTI, so I always immediately like. I don't like, believe it has oh, anything babe. to do with it. I'm gonna get the shower. I just don't believe it has anything to do with that. Well, anyway. I don't know. Well, I also pee in the shower, so you know. I mean, everyone does. No, I don't know if everyone does, mm. but it's like a way of me like flushing out all of my holes at once. Oh no, but for me, it's cystitis. Like I, it's yeah. ca- here, like running water is just a thing. I just can't hold it in all of the time. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I always heard you should pee, pee after shower, sex after. <laughs> Pee shower sex something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I am that person. If someone had a problem with that, I'd be like, you know, I care more about my lack of UTIs than I do about you, babe. Well, I do think it's shitty politics to just like, because someone has that like hang up that clearly comes from a place of, oh, fuck it, trauma, like to just completely not deal with them, be like, that's on you, babes. Like, th- I mean, maybe those people exist. And obviously, if you're not into that, you shouldn't be with but someone. But this is the problem, like, right? Where did that well, line? Since when do we just throw perfect guys away? Like, since what, when did this happen? Like, used to be like, I don't know, like, yeah, you get married, then you go, like, through thick yeah, and thin together. It. Like, and you fucking deal with it. Since when is this whole thing of, like, oh, I don't know, he showers after sex, so we're, I'm just gonna, like, not see him well, anymore. it's this weird Bullshit. line on, like, consent or, like, not being in a relationship you don't like, which is interesting right now. Because on the one hand, it's like, be there for your partner, deal with this, this, this is what it's expected. On the other hand, it's like, if you don't like one little thing, you're not compatible yeah. and you have every right to break up. And I kind of agree with both, but I just feel like that's untenable because everyone has irritating little habits yeah. that you have to deal with. I think it's also easier in London because we probably will just find someone else. But like, I guess more in rural places, it's a bit trickier. I also think the longer you're with someone, those quibbles will either build up or you'll just get used to them and then you'll eventually miss them when they die. That's why I hear from like old couples. Ah. Is that like they miss him snoring after now all that? No, I want to very specifically talk about marriage, I think, because there is this one... You know, I think it ties into both of these questions. The idea of the one and that's that. Gosh, I I hate to... It's kind of, again, revealing more than one would like to and that sort of stuff. But I've just come back from Russia where I was, uh, you know, for um, three weeks and that's very, very patriarchal society. All of my cousins and their parents, you know, wedded in like early 20s. And I mean very early 20s, like 21. Or are planning to... And sure they get on sure they have children sure i can see there's companionship sure i also see that they're that that's just it and i just don't think it's enough i don't think i just it hurts me to think that people just think that will do and then they fall into marriages and for me the idea right now to be able to like say yes to someone for another 70 years oh my god it's so high like a hand thang and of course that gives that a certain sense of security but it's also super scary i guess as like an atheist or whatever i i feel like i wouldn't mind getting married because i know i could always divorce but i guess if you if you genuinely think that that's it that is really scary yeah i think it's it's not even well i guess they're muslim any anyway so sort of like a but it's still the idea of marriage is is sanctity of marriage no is divorce normalized I guess it would be, but I think it's more of like a judgment around like the relatives as such. So rather than being a religious thing, it's more like a um, societal mm. thing, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But um, don't settle for anyone that is less than perfect. And like the idea that you're already fetishizing the someone 
someone perfect like you're not gonna find that perfect so you're gonna settle for anyone that's just there for you and that's so tragic see i kind of think the opposite like i think looking for someone perfect is a very harmful thing because like someone does not reveal their perfectness straight away perfectness is also something that grows and like love is something that grows it's not like love is not a stable thing right it ebbs and flows oh, that's funny i don't i don't know i i i, I guess I'm really into the idea of companionship because I'm a very, very lonely person and I care more for companionship than I do for passion. But I know that's different to you. Mm, mm. I suppose, I think love fades. I don't necessarily see it as... You've never had it grow. mm, Companionship grows. That love and desire and like insane just passion doesn't. I feel like passion... Zoop, but like love in terms of like affection and deepness of connection up i don't know no i i mean ideally they both either go up or remain i mean the same, again i'm still very young you know well, so yeah, I guess me too. i've only had like this. what not that many long-term relationships how has long counted long term more than a year well that's the thing the all relatives i'm talking about they were married after like two years and that's i've all of my I've, most of my relationships have been way all like longer than that so don't really know what that's true about. you've had longer relationships than most people i know yeah yeah i'm very very lucky to but it's just i don't know i just think that stuff does fade but i do however believe in meeting like the right person as mm. such i do too yeah so it's kind of it's the other way around but I'm, well, i guess what i'm scared of is waiting my entire life for the perfect person and not ever finding them but you will. I don't know. I just really think you will. And I don't think someone is necessarily obviously perfect straight away. Like, but they are, even if it's just for a couple of years. No, I but mean, I don't think I would notice that they were the perfect person straight away. Like, even say the person I had the most strongest feelings for I've ever had. It took me four months before I realised how strong my feelings were. Of knowing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I mean, like, Im- like expecting to find the perfect person fully formed right there and waiting for you and you meet them and you have a conversation, you're like, they're perfect. I don't think that will happen. I think that will happen, but I think it's absolutely fine to say that there is an expiration date to that. And like, I think most of the time that's the case, is that, that like, you just, but then you just end up being married and then it's just like, that's just the thing that's there. Well, yeah, that's, I, I told Mariam this already, but I want to share with you this great tweet I saw the other day, which is... Um, Having kids is raising a uh, is running a crash with someone you used to sleep with, and like not to say that you can't still be in love and have kids. Of course you can, but For like sure. and obviously lots of still incredibly in love qua- uh, couples mm. that yeah they exist. It's just I think uh, the idea that is pushed down our throats all the time is that that is the usual. That's what you should do. Yeah. That, not that that's even what you should do, but that everyone has that. Of and course if you, you don't... get married and then you lose passion and you raise your kids, that's what life is like. No, but I think it's the other way around. Well, I mean, I think that w- the, the idea that's pushed down our throats is that no, actually, everyone is in love and happy all the time. And the people that are not in those relationships were the ones that are losing out. Well, that's the desperate housewife mentality, right? But it turns out they will actually like secretly like jacking pills and having a terrible life. Like look yeah. at 1950s housewives, how, how happy were they? I guess what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying it coherently at all, is that it's absolutely fine to understand that incredible love exists, but it won't last. And because you have that understanding, it's 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 then okay to... Obviously, I don't think pe- people should just fall into marriages like that. No. And I, unless I, you think you're going to like... Unless it's like for foreseeable future. Yeah. It's not forever. But I also don't think you shouldn't date until you've found that, I guess is the angle I'm sure. coming from. Yeah. Well, but I think we were no, just slightly talking fun. across purposes. Exactly, yeah. I think we were slightly talking across yeah, purposes yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't want you to hold off from, like, sleeping around because they're this perfect person. They might be or they're not. Mariam thinks there definitely is. But that, but she still doesn't think that you should not do anything until you find them. Also, some of the best, you know, I don't know, like, uh, people that I've mo- loved the most, I haven't necessarily had the best sex also. with. And, you know, some of the people that I just think are absolute fucking jerks, all my days do they make me... Mm. Come many a time. Yeah. And obviously it's great if those two things come together. But, um... Uh, not sex, always. Sex without love can be sick. And love without sex can also be sick. And yeah. sex and love and marriage, if you like, sure. also can be great. Also cannot be, you know. 
Yeah. But you can't wait for a thing that may or may not happen at some point and then expect when that thing does happen that it lasts forever because the, all of the things coming together are very unlikely. Well, what is marriage? Anyways, what, you just promise what to a god or to people around you or to the state that you're going to be like with this person all forever? There's a lot of pressure. I just find it so unreasonable. I, I just, I don't know. I just find it so like... So, but see, I'm such a, like, un- about marriage now. Fucking like... What's the word? Um arcane institution such an arcane idea it's like now we know that like a smartphone is better than like a flip phone or whatever like it just does more things so that's what i'm thinking like i don't know just like partnership and like great sex and adventures and i know polyamory if you're into that and like i don't know fetishes that's so much more fun than like i've met someone i've had marriage with them like one is actually advanced and the other one is just like Mm. it's just so fucking basic you're gonna dogging in your 50s which is fine it it just seems like it it, it, it yeah it's internet one point oh you know what I mean like it's just not, it's mm. just so fucking basic yeah your penis is a smartphone not a flip phone let it do many things Go there's so many different ways to do a relationship and do long term relationships as well do forever relationships have babies there are so many different formats and I know I'm sounding like a fucking hippie now but like. That's not the case. That I. Uh, she is a hippie. She burns incense. I've seen her. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you expose me like that? I even have scented candles, and it was disgusting. Um, but I also play video games. It's fine. My toilet is here. Okay. Last anything? Uh, or? Sorry, I can't I've, work oh, with your phone. It's me neither. It's me. And don't let anyone tell Wait, you. Wait, am I like, about to show the internet that's my passcode? The, that's Ooh. like the end ambition is signing yes. that fucking sheet of paper because two thirds of marriage ends in divorce. Sure, fine, yeah, but like, I mean, again, I hate it, Carrie Bradshaw. She's like, I can't say yes to someone forever if what I mean in my head is for foreseeable future, and I think that's what we all know that that is for foreseeable future. You turn down hookups for some misguided trust that you'll find a girl who shares your ideals. Why not do both? Ideals change as well. Yeah, what are your ideals? You haven't really outlined them. You're 25, you're 26. Your ideals are going to change. The person that you are right now, you're not going to be like that in 10 years' time. And it's... Uh, it, you're gonna, you might grow together, but you might go grow really yeah. separately. And then be fucking miserable that you don't fit each other's ideals. And oh. you're married. And you're married. And now there's a prenup, or maybe, God forbid, there's not a prenup. And there's 20 children. That are also unhappy and hate your guts. Yeah, just, yeah. It's hard with the whole God thing because I can't relate to that, but I can imagine what it's like basically to have an overbearing parent that judges everything you do and knows everything you do. Well, it's the same with our, like, political milieu, right? Like, I mean, there's so much, again, judgment in the way that you do things. And I've actually yes, but at least when we're, we're dead, they can't judge us anymore. That, 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 that's, that's true. <laughs> but I've also seen, like, some um, radical lefty types. Actually, it's been really interesting. Um, where they were like, I'm going to get married as a rebellious project against the anarchist left. Ooh, can I frame that? Because I really want to get married. But I haven't got really a legitimate framing. Fine, okay, talk to I don't to actually want to get married. I want a wedding. I want like everyone I know to wear a big hat sure, and I want to wear fine. a massive white dress and I want my partner to have a top hat and a bow tie and I want there to be a jazz band. Fine, okay. Will you come to my wedding? Depends who it's with. Does it? Yes. What if I don't approve? It's only a wedding. I'll get divorced the next day. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> can I be made of dishonor? <laughs> yes, you can be made of dishonor. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sleep with all the groomsmen. <laughs> Bring some lube. <laughs> it's so funny because, again, we, I, I will repeat something that I think we spoke about maybe in episode one or two where we're, like, projecting this, like, huge image of some sort of, like, I don't know, experience and all this and that. But actually, we lead some of the most conservative sex lives that from a lot of what we know, actually, from a lot of people that we know. Like, we're actually not I that out there. I don't know. How do we know what people's sex lives are like? They mostly seem fraughter than funner. More fraught than more fun. No, no, no. Correct, correct. <laughs> um, like, there's no one whose sex life I envy that we know. A couple. Sex life, not love life. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I know there's one 
or two love lives we might envy. But I'm talking about sex lives. Yeah, but I mean, I give them like five years, you know, so. Well, this is the thing. We're going to wait until our mid-30s and get all the divorcees. 